uh, just so you guys know, all of your team members uh, assume that you make and keep way more money than you actually do. Um, and you're just being greedy and not giving it to them because you're all evil people, right? Let's kind of focus on the first type of meeting, this quarterly strategic planning session. Again, this is where every, this is kind of the derivative work that every meeting that we have comes from, right? What are we going to do this month, this quarter, this year at Digital Marketer, and then check in? So uh, again, every quarter the executive team goes off site, and we have uh, these questions to answer at our off site. Question number one Where are we? Right? Where, where are we in revenue? Where are we in customer counts? Where are we in market cap? Where are we as a company? Number two, how did we get here? Because sometimes we never intended to be where we are. That can be good, that can be bad. Sometimes we're on the verge of launching a SaaS product, which is where we're at right now. That wasn't intentional. But here we are. We've put a ton of resources, both in time and, and um, actual uh, money, behind this SaaS product, and we need to quickly learn how to market and sell a SaaS product. This isn't, uh, uh, you know, this, this isn't pretend or make-believe. This was actually our last offsite. Here we are with the SaaS. What the hell do we do now? Where are we going? Again, this needs to be reviewed uh, to make sure new members of the team come in, even at the executive team level, we had almost a 100% turnover year over year on our executive team, um, which I don't believe is necessarily a bad thing, especially for the reasons that we had turnover. Digital Marketer moved from kind of a, more of an adolescence phase business into an adult phase uh, business. And if you've, if you've read Managing Oneself from Peter Drucker, you know that at some point in time, businesses, uh, as, as models go from small business to big business, as they go from super entrepreneurial to somewhat uh, corporate, more structure, more depth in, in your org chart that it stops become fulfilling, uh, becoming fulfilling to some people. And those people um, recognize that and leave and that's okay as long as you have systems in place. But for us, we have to evaluate this. Where are you going? And we have to be redundant. Everyone needs to get tired of hearing it. Because as your organization grows, you can't have, I heard from this person who heard from this person who heard from this person that we're focusing on this and here is why. Think about the bolt-on business. Why the heck are we, uh, are, are we going when we're in the supplement business and, and working with someone who has, uh, who teaches veterinarians how to do orthopedic surgery? I don't understand, I'm the email guy, now I have more email to deal, why are we doing this? If you can't communicate why those initiatives, why those tasks fit into your overall goal, then people assume that you're doing it, one, uh, to make more money and get richer, because uh, just so you guys know, all of your team members uh, assume that you make and keep way more money than you actually do, um, and you're just being greedy and not giving it to them because you're all evil people, right? Forget the risk thing, forget that pesky uh, margin thing that most businesses have to deal with. Everyone assumes that you make way more and keep exponentially more than you actually do, and you're just being greedy by not sharing it to them. So when you pile on extra work, you're just a special kind of son of a bitch. <laughs> that's what you're fighting. Every single day, that's the narrative that you're fighting with your team. So how do you get them moving in one direction and it can't be, hey guys, welcome to work where you today get to make me richer. Right? High fives? I'm gonna go get in my expensive car, go to a fancy lunch, you guys stay here. Woo. That's what we're not gonna do. So we have to keep reminding people of these things so that everyone knows and gets tired of hearing why what we're doing is important, why every bolt-on business moves towards something we've all agreed upon and everyone knows where the priority comes in. Then what or who do we need to get there, right? If this is where we're at, this is why we're here, this is where we're going, what don't we have to get where we're going? Is that people, systems, software, tools, money? Do we need more money? Do we need more leads? Do we need more subs uh, subscribe? Like, what do we need to get where we're going? And then number five, what is the single most important thing we must do in the next three to six months to ensure success? This is a big one. If everyone knows this, 
Now we can start every department, every team member, every, uh, every person at your company can start saying, how do I affect that number? If that's the most important thing, how do I affect that? And if we can get everyone to rally around that, now the narrative's not, um, hey guys, congratulations, if we make more money, I get richer, and it's, we are now united in this thing and this is what's going to carry us there. We didn't invent this framework. I'll tell you, digital marketer, when we talk about goals, strategic planning, uh, initiatives, uh, we really focus on uh, two different books and two different strategies. I'm gonna highly recommend that if you guys haven't read these books that you do so. Uh, the first one is The Four Disciplines of Execution. Has anyone here read that book? Of course you have. If you didn't raise your hand, I was going to call you out. Uh, so The Four Disciplines of Execution, it's an amazing book. It introduces uh, the idea of a WIG, a wildly important goal. For us, the answer to number five on the strategic planning session is called our WIG. It's our wildly important goal. It's the thing at which we must get done and we must communicate that it's going to, when we do this, it will help us get closer to uh, kind of our mission or you know, our, our, our big initiative or some pivot that we're making, right? So wildly important goal is introduced in here. I'm not gonna go through this whole thing, but I'm gonna give you some high, uh, high points that I think you'll need to understand kind of the derivative meetings. So the wildly important goal is really cool um, because it's measurable. I want this to increase, this thing to either increase or decrease from X to Y by when, right? From X to Y, by when. Then after we go from a wig, it introduces lead measures. Remember, our goal is to tell our team members how they can participate and how they have an effect on our wildly important goal. So how do we do that? Right? It introduces lead and lag measures. So your, what lead measure, measures, what leading indicators can we give not only uh, the company, not only the teams at the company, but every individual at the company that are predictive and completely controlled by that person that they can do every single day that should lead towards this. Uh, again, predictive and influenceable. I'll tell you a great example that they use in the book, and, and I'm gonna fly through this part because again, this isn't a book report. Uh, I, I really do hope that you guys read this book. Uh, but they talk about if your goal is to lose weight or to get in shape or both, right? What is the thing that you can do uh, that's a lead measure that is going to make sure that you do that and, in the, and, and, and they start going through this process. Well, um, I can go to the gym every day. Yeah, you can, That's right. but what can you do to make sure that you get to the gym every day? And they walk it all the way back to, well, if I, at night before I go to bed, I pack my gym bag. So I get my clothes out for the gym, I get my clothes out for work after the gym, I pack it and I set it by the back door. That's the one activity that I can do every day that will, will be a leading indicator on whether or not I go to the gym. Well, imagine if your team members, every person at your company knew that one thing that they could, what's their gym bag that they do every single day that leads to something that leads to your wildly important goal. That's what this book is gonna break down. It's gonna then talk about scoreboards. So how do you put in scoreboards that are public that everyone knows, did I or didn't I, right? It creates this cadence of accountability. Uh, and then we're talking about um, sharing this leading indicator uh, report at weekly company all hands meetings. Right? So you're gonna share this report publicly on this, did I or didn't I? Did our team or did our team not do these things that we said we're gonna lead over here? Uh, and then you have WIG progress uh, at company all hands meeting. So the first meeting of every month, I stand up here at the beginning of the meeting and I say, okay guys, we took MRR from this to this last month. Did we get closer or did we get further away from our, our wildly important goal? <laughs>